Okay, greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am directing this video to basically the Jehovah's Witnesses themselves. Although there's a lot of great information in here for others to be able to use to show the Jehovah's Witnesses themselves the history of the organization. We are going to be dealing only with quotes directly from the Watchtower organization themselves and we are going to go back in time to the beginning of the organization and we're going to just look at quotes throughout the history of the organization and we are going to expose this organization. Okay, so the Watchtower organization this, of course, says of Canada on it, but regardless, it doesn't matter. This is the organization of the Jehovah's Witnesses <coughs> who are taught that their organization is the only organization that is truly led by God and that his, his spirit directs the organization. Uh, we're going to expose um, how false that is throughout uh, this presentation again which is going to be uh, only quotes from the organization itself so this is nothing to do with outside of the organization everything that is going to be presented was spoken of the leadership spoken by the leadership of this organization over the last hundred years or so okay so without further ado again it's going to be completely watched our quotes only and I am going to give the source of exactly where that quote came from this way there's no discrepancies there's no you know that's a false misquote okay so anybody who is within the organization can hopefully find these quotes themselves <coughs> all of this stuff is public record so here we go with the first quote this uh, quote right here is from the Watchtower, August 15, 1981, page 29. Look it up. Look at the quote in context. From time to time there have arisen the, uh, from among the ranks of Jehovah's people those who, like the original Satan, have adopted an independent, fault-finding attitude. They say that it is sufficient to read the Bible exclusively, either alone or in small groups at home. But, strangely, through such Bible reading, they have reverted right back to the apostate doctrines that commentaries by Christendom's, Christendom's clergy were teaching 100 years ago. Now, anybody can see that this is a manipulation tactic. <coughs> manipulation is witchcraft. Okay? just uh, something that needs to be understood manipulation is witchcraft this is manipulating people um, you know they want to talk about how the those who have left the watchtower it's because that you know they reverted back to the apostate doctrines you know believing that Jesus is God okay and I will refer um, the Jehovah's Witnesses watching this video to watch my other video Jesus is Jehovah and uh, I hope that you enjoy it it's going to expose a lot of things that you need to see so this is manipulation right here making sure that they warn their people don't look at outside sources don't listen to what other people say it's all lies it's all deception it's because they want to keep you in their own de deception and lies. Okay, this is, uh, <coughs> we're going to get into some quotes now, starting in 1879. Like I said, I'm going to do this in order. We're going to go back in time, and we're going to read all of these things, and you're going to be able to see uh, conclusively the manipulation, the lies, the false teachings, the false prophecies, it's all going to come to light. Christ came in the character of a bridegroom in 1874. 
Now, another thing I just want to mention before I move on is that uh, today the witnesses, you know, they will um, disconnect themselves from the founder of their religion, if you will. Uh, his name was Charles Taze Russell. Anyway, I go uh, over more of that in my other video series entitled Satan's Visible Kingdom. And it goes into how Charles Taze Russell um, was part of a, a world system that still runs the world today. He was just another branch of it. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and keep reading. That was 1879, that quote. It was from the Watchtower, October 1879, page 4. 1880, <clears throat> we need not here repeat the evidences that the seventh trump began its sounding in A.D. 1840 and will continue until the end of the time of trouble and the end of the time of the Gentiles, A.D. 1914. And that it is the trouble of this great day, which is here symbolically called the voice of the archangel, when he begins the deliverance of fleshly Israel. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince, archangel, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation. Nor will we here again present the conclusive Bible proof that our Lord came for his bride in 1874. Okay. 1888. In this chapter, we present the Bible evidence proving that the full end of the times of the Gentiles, the full end of their lease of dominion, will be reached in A.D. 1914, and that the date will be the furthest limit of the rule of imperfect men. And be it observed that if this is shown to be a fact firmly established by the scriptures, it will prove. Firstly, that at that date, the kingdom of God, for which our Lord taught us to pray, saying, Thy kingdom come, will obtain full universal control, and then it will be, then be set up or firmly established in the earth on the ruins of present institutions. The time at, is at hand, 1888, page 7677. 1889. Be not surprised then when in subsequent chapters we present proofs that the settling, the setting up of the kingdom of God is already begun, that it is pointed out in prophecy as due to begin the exercise of power in A.D. 1878, and that the battle of the great day of God Almighty, Revelation 16:14, which will end in A.D. 1914 with the complete overthrow of Earth's present rulership is already commenced. The gathering of the armies is plainly visible from the standpoint of God's Word. Studies in the Scriptures, Volume 2. The Time is at Hand, 1889 edition, page 101. And the 1915 edition of this text changed A.D. 1914 to read A.D. 1915. So see, now you're beginning to see how they change these things. When something doesn't happen, they change it, okay? So in the original edition of 1889, the time is at hand. They had end in A.D. 1914. And then in when it didn't happen, in 1915 edition, changed the text to read A.D. 1915. 1889. Remember that the 40 years Jewish harvest ended eight October A.D. 69 and was followed by the complete overthrow of that nation. And that likewise the 40 years of the Gospel Age harvest will end October 1914. And that likewise the overthrow of Christendom, so called, must be expected to immediately follow. Studies in the Scriptures, Volume 2 page 245. Okay, 1894. 17 years ago, people said, 
concerning their time, features presented in Millennial Dawn. They seem reasonable in many respects, but surely no such radical changes could occur between now and the close of 1914. If you had proved that they would come about in a century or two, it would seem much more probable. What changes have since occurred and what velocity is gained daily? The old is quickly passing and the new is coming in. Now in view of recent labor troubles and threatened anarchy, our readers are writing to know if there may not be a mistake in the 1914 date. They say that they do not see how present conditions can hold out so long under the strain. We see no reason for changing the figures, nor could we change them if we would. They are, we believe, God's dates, not ours. Bear, but bear in mind that the end of 1914 is not the date for the beginning, but for the end of the time of trouble. Zion's Watchtower. Can it be delayed until 1914? Charles Taze Russell, July 15th, 1894. Also in Watchtower Reprints, 1894, page 1677. Okay, 1894, we see no reason for changing the figures, nor could we change them if we would. They are, we believe, God's dates, not ours. Okay. Our Lord, this is 1897. Our Lord, the appointed king, is now present since October 1874 A.D. And the formal inauguration of his kingly office dates from April 1878 A.D. Studies in the Scriptures, Volume 4, page 621, 1897. Okay. 1902. In view of the strong biblical evidence concerning the times of the Gentiles, we consider it an established truth. Okay. We consider it an established truth that the final end of the kingdoms of this world and the full establishment of the kingdom of God will be accomplished by the end of A.D. 1914. The time is at hand. 1902 edition, page 99. Now, I just want to make a point that you see how they are conditioning their followers and in these quotes and through their teachings okay they are preparing their people as an established truth that these things are going to happen okay let's move on 1908 in view of the strong Bible evidence concerning the times of the Gentiles, we consider it an established truth that the final end of the kingdom of this world and the full establishment of the kingdom of God will be accomplished in the, in, in the end of A.D. 1914. This is the time at hand. The time is at hand, 1889 and 1908 editions, page 99. <coughs> uh, 1914. Studying God's word, we have measured the 2,520 years, the seven symbolic times from that year, 606 B.C., and have found that it reached down to October 1914 as nearly as we were able to reckon. We did not say positively that this would be the year. Watchtower, November 1st, 1914, page 325. Okay, so this is where they start to backtrack. We did not say positively that this would be the year. Let's go back to that quote in 1894. They are, we believe, God's dates, not ours. Okay, this isn't the people that are attending the studies of the Watchtower leadership. These are the leadership themselves convincing those following them, okay? Look again. 
we did not say positively that this would be the year. Uh, yes, they did. Okay. These are the facts, and I'm showing it to you now. 1915. I just want to go back for a second. Okay. 1915. In view of the strong Bible evidence concerning the times of the Gentiles, we consider it an established truth that the final end of the kingdoms of this world and the full establishment of the kingdom of God will be accomplished near the end of A.D. 15. Okay, so now they're changing it. They were a year off, is what they're telling their people. The time is at hand, 1915 edition, page 99. Be not surprised then, this is the same year, when in subsequent chapters we present proofs that the setting up of God, the kingdom of God has already begun, that it pointed out, that is pointed out in prophecy as due to begin the exercise of power in 1878, and that the battle of the great day of God Almighty, which will end in A.D. 15. Okay, remember the other quote, they changed it in this book in the 1915 edition. It was A.D. 1914, and they changed it to... A.D. 1915. 1916. The Bible chronology herein presented shows that the six great 1,000-year days beginning with Adam are ended and that the great seventh day, the thousand years of Christ's reign, began in 1873. The time is at hand. Forward in page 2, 1916. 1916, we see no reason for doubting, therefore, that the times of the Gentiles ended in 1914 and that a few more years will witness the utter collapse and the full establishment of God's kingdom in the hands of the Messiah. Watchtower reprints, 6, September 1st, 1916, page 5950. 1970, 17, there will be no slip-up. Abraham should enter upon the actual possession of his promised inheritance in the year 1925. So now they're going to move the date up to 1925. Watchtower, October 15th, 1917, page 6157. I'm going through these quickly, but feel free to rewind the video, read all of them again, go through them all. 1917. <coughs> No doubt Satan believed the Millennial Kingdom was due. Satan believed the Millennial Kingdom was due to be set up in 1915. You know, who believed that? The leadership of the Watchtowers believed that. Be that as it may, there is evidence that the establishment of the Kingdom in Palestine will probably be in 1925, ten years later than we once calculated. Studies in the Scriptures, Volume 7, The Finished Mystery, page 128. Okay. We'll keep going. Again, 1917. And the mountains were not found. Even the republics will disappear in the fall of 1920, and the mountains were not found, and uh, every kingdom of earth will pass away, be swallowed up in anarchy. The Finished Mystery, 1917 edition. Page 258. Again, 1917, as the fleshly-minded apostates from Christianity, siding with the radicals and revolutionaries, will rejoice at the inheritance of desolation that will be Christendom's after 1918. So will God do to the successful revolutionary movement? It shall be utterly desolated, even all of it. Not one vestige of it shall survive the ravages of wo worldwide all-embracing anarchy in the fall of 1920. The Finnish Mystery, 1917, page 542. Okay, take note. The 1926 edition reads, In the end of the time of trouble. Okay, so they changed it. Again, they, they, that's what they keep doing. But you can find this stuff 
It's all public record. 1917, the vision of the prophet Ezekiel depicts the establishment, the established theocratic kingdom of God on earth, civil and re uh, religious, spiritual and earthly. The temple is a type of a type and symbol of better things to come. After the wars, revolutions, and anarchy of the period from 1914 to 1925 have passed. The Finnish Mystery, 1917, page 569. The 1926 edition reads, of the time of trouble has pa have passed. Changed it. 1918, therefore, because <coughs> it didn't happen in 1925, so they had to reprint a new edition and change it. Therefore, we may confidently expect that 1925 will mark the return of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the faithful prophets of old, particularly those named by the apostle in Hebrews 11 to the condition of human perfection. This is in Millions Now Living Will Never Die, page 89. 1920. A simple calculation of these jubilees brings us to the, this important fact. 70 jubilees of 50 years each would be a total of 3,500 years. That period of time beginning 1575 before AD 1 of necessity would end in the fall of 1925, at which time the type ends and the great anti-type must begin. What then should we expect to take place? <coughs> in, the, in the type there must be a full restoration, beginning of restoration of all things. The chief thing to be restored is the human race to life. And since other scriptures definitely fix the fact that there will be a resurrection of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and other faithful ones of old, and that these will have their first favor, we may expect 1925 to witness the return of these faithful men and Israel from the condition of death, being resurrected and fully restored to perfect humanity and made uh, the visible legal representatives of the new order of things on earth. This is from Millions Now Living Will Never Die, 1920 edition, page 89 and 90. Notice how it talks about Israel, okay? The witnesses of today believe that they are spiritual Israel, but see, that's something that their leadership has kept from them also because when Israel actually really did become a nation again in 1948, they completely ignored that. 1922. The period must end in 1925. The type ending, the anti-type must begin and therefore 1925 is definitely fixed in the scriptures. Every thinking person can see that a great climax is at hand. The scriptures clearly indicate that the climax is the fall of Satan's empire and the full establishment of the messianic kingdom. This climax will be reached by 1925 and that the marking the beginning of the fulfillment of the long promised blessings of life to the people, mil millions now living on earth will be living then and those who obey the righteous laws of the new arrangement will live forever therefore it can be confidently said at this time that millions now living will never die golden age january 4th 1922 page 217 okay i believe it's fair to say that there is no longer any of these Jehovah's Witnesses still alive at that at this point now today. 1922. We have no doubt whatever in regard to the chronology relating to the dates 1874, 1914, 1918 and 1925. Again, <coughs> all false dates where now they have to spiritualize those things. It was on this line of reckoning that the dates 1874, 1914, and 1918 were located. And the Lord has placed the stamp of his seal upon 1914 and 1918 beyond any possibility of erasure. 
What further evidence do we need using the same measuring line? It is an easy matter to locate 1925, probably in the fall, for the beginning of the anti-typical jubilee. There can be no more question about 1925 than there was about 1914. This is from the Watchtower, page 150, May 15th, 1922. 1922, this chronology is not of man, but of God. Being of divine origin and divinely corroborated, present truth chronology stands in a class by itself, absolutely and unqualifiedly correct. Watchtower, July 15th, 1922, page 217. 1923, <clears throat> well, 1922 again. 1914 ended the Gentile times. The date, 1925, is even more distinctly indicated by the scriptures. By then, the great crisis will be reached and probably passed. Watchtower, September 1st, 1922, page 262. 1923. 1925 is definitely settled by the scriptures. The Christian has much more upon which to base his faith than Noah had upon which to base his faith in the coming deluge. You see how they blow it up? They're telling their people back then in 1923 that they have much more to base their faith on than Noah had, okay? Watchtower, April 1st, 1923. 1923, it is our, th our thought is that 1925 is definitely settled by the scriptures. As to Noah, the Christian now has much more upon which to base his faith than Noah had upon which to base his faith in the coming deluge. Watchtower, page 106, and this is March 1st, 1923. Okay, so a month later. 1924. Surely there is not the slightest room for doubt in the mind of a truly consecrated child of God that the Lord Jesus is present and has been since 1874. Watchtower, January 1st, 1924, page 5. 1926. Watch this. Some anticipated that the work would end in 1925, but the Lord did not state so. The difficulty was that the friends inflated their imaginations beyond reason, and that when their imagination burst asunder, they were inclined to throw away everything. Watchtower 1926, page 232. So what they did was they built the hopes of their people up. Then they, when it didn't come to pass, the hopes of their believers and followers, their hopes were smashed, and they ducked out of the watchtower. They didn't throw away anything. They walked away from lies. Okay. The difficulty was that the friends inflated their imaginations beyond reason. No, it was the watchtower itself in their teachings and everything that they were prophesying to their people. Okay, in a little bit we're going to show that uh, they even admit to them being false prophecies. Okay, so we're going to move on. 1929. Many of such had been looking for the Lord to come and take them to heaven and had particularly fixed the year 1914 as when this should be done. The year 1914 14 was a marked date. But these had merely contemplated something to happen which did not come to pass. No, they prophesied something to happen. Prophecy, 1929. Okay, page 89. 1931, and we're going in order of dates from the beginning towards the later history. <coughs> 1931, God's faithful people on earth emphasized the importance of the dates 1914 and 1918 and 1925. 
They had much to say about these dates and what would come to pass, but all they predicted did not come to pass. Vindication, Volume 1, 1931, page 146. All they predicted did not come to pass. And yet even today, the Watchtower is talking about these dates and the importance of these dates when right here shows that nothing happened. And they admitted it themselves. 1931, again the same year, there was a measure of disappointment on the part of Jehovah's faithful ones on earth concerning the year 1914, 1918, and 1925, which disappointment lasted for a time. Later, the faithful learned that these dates were definitely fixed in the scriptures. And they also learned to quit fixing dates for future and for the future and predicting what would come to pass on a certain date. But to rely, and they do rely, upon the word of God as to the events that must come to pass. J.F. Rutherford, Vindication, 1931, page 338 and 339. Okay, they learned to quit fixing dates. No, they didn't as we will see here in a little while. Predicting what would come to pass on a certain date, and nothing did. 1938, <clears throat> mark the words of Jesus. Mark the words of Jesus, which definitely seemed to discourage the bearing of children immediately before or during Armageddon. It would therefore appear that there is no reasonable or scriptural injun injunction to bring children into the world immediately before Armageddon, where we are now. Watchtower, November 1st, 1938, page 324. Here we have the Watchtower telling their people there's no reason for you to have children. Okay, so all of you Jehovah's Witnesses, who were born after 1938, thank God your parents did not listen to them. 1938, they had preached that in an early time God would overthrow Christendom. They had preached. Who preached that? The Watchtower, the leadership. Many had emphasized the year 1925 as the date, and then when the date did not materialize, the date was moved up to 1932. Again, 1932 came, and Christendom was not destroyed, and now it was discovered that Christendom would be spared a, for a while longer for the sake of the Jonadab class, and this made the proud elective elder crowd very mad. Watchtower, February 15th, 1938, page 54. Okay, so we're going to move on. 1938. Would it be scripturally proper for them to marry and begin to rear children? No, is the answer, which is supported by the scriptures. I will, I will be far better to be unhampered and without burdens, that they may do the Lord's will now as the Lord commands, and also be without hindrance during Armageddon. Those who now contemplate marriage, it would seem, would do better if they wait a few years <clears throat> until the fiery storm of Armageddon is gone. Face the Facts, 1938, page 46, 47, and 50. So here they are advising their followers not to get married, not to have children. 1951, under the guidance of God's spirit of freedom, the magazine today known as The Watchtower, but known back then, there as Zion's Watchtower, began to be published in 1879. In the first year of its publication, it pointed to the date 1914 as marked in the Bible. This is in What Has Religion Done for Mankind, 1951, page 308. So here they are now again pointing back to under the guidance of God's Spirit, okay? But <coughs> you just saw quotes which contradict all of this. See how back and forth all this is? 1963. 
Of what significance is this today? It means that by the fall of 1963, man has dwelt upon this earth 5,988 years. Does this mean then that by 1963 we had progressed 5,988 years into the, into the day on which Jehovah has been resting from all his work? Genesis 2.3. No, for the creation of Adam does not correspond with the beginning of Jehovah's rest day. Following Adam's creation and still within the sixth creative day, Jehovah appears to have been forming further animal and bird creations. Also, uh, he had Adam's name on the animals, which would take some time, and he proceeded to create Eve. Whatever time elapsed between Adam's creation and the end of the sixth day must be subtracted from the 5988 years in order to give the actual length of time from the beginning of the seventh day until now. It does no good to use Bible chronology for speculating on dates that are still future in the stream of time. All scripture is inspired of God and beneficial. 1963, page 286. 1966. According to this trustworthy Bible chronology, hold on a second, what do we just see right here? Okay, you can't count on that. It does no good to use Bible chronology for speculating on dates. And here they are going, according to this trustworthy Bible chronology, 6,000 years from man's creation will end in 1975. And the seventh period of a thousand years of human history will begin in the fall of 1975. 6,000 years of man's existence on earth will soon be up, yea, within this generation. The reign of Christ to parallel the seventh millennium. Life Everlasting in Freedom of the Sons of God, 1966, page 29 and 30. So we saw in the past that they said they had learned to quit fixing dates. And here in 1966, they're going to make more predictions for 1975. 1968, Adam created at close of sixth day, or we'd assume from the study that the Battle of Armageddon will be over by the autumn of 1975, and the long-looked 4,000-year reign of Christ will begin by then. Possibly, but we wait to see how closely the 7,000-year period of man's existence coincides with the Sabbath-like thousand-year reign of Christ. It may, only <coughs> it may involve only a difference of weeks or months not years. Watchtower, August 15th, 1968, page 499. 1968, again. I know enough of what is going on to assure you that in 15 years from today, this world is going to be too dangerous to live in. Truth that leads to eternal life, page 9, 1968 edition. Okay, in the 1981 edition, it deletes in 15 years from today. Okay, so again, goes to show you how they change things as they go along. <laughs> and look, look at this one, 1968, 1914, a marked year. Years in advance, Bible scholars realized that 1914 was to be a year of great significance. They expected great changes to take place, and the facts confirm that 1914 was indeed a marked year. The truth that leads to eternal life, 1968. What Bible scholars are they talking about? Well, they must be talking about Charles Taze Russell because he was the leadership. He was the one that started the whole movement. And so now they're calling him a Bible scholar. But they also deny and they disconnect themselves from him. 1968. True, there have been those in times past who predicted an end to the world, even announcing a specific date. Yet nothing happened. The end did not come. They were guilty of false prophesying. Why? What was missing? Missing from such people were God's truths 
and the evidence that he was using and guiding them. Awake, October 8th, 1968. Okay. Guilty of false prophesying. All of their dates are false prophecies. Jesus did not return in 1914 or 1925. 1969. More recently, earnest researchers of the Holy Bible have made a recheck of his chronology. <laughs> earnest researchers. According to their calculations, the six millenniums of mankind's life on earth would end in the mid-70s. Thus, the seventh millennium from man's creation by Jehovah would begin within less than 10 years. Okay, 1969. What year is it right now? 2018. Okay. 1972. Of course, it's easy to say that this group acts as a prophet of God. It is another thing to prove it. The only way that this can be done is to review the record. What does it show? Watchtower, April 1st, 1972, page 197. Well, you're seeing exactly what it shows right now. This is the record. This is all going on record. Everything they did in the past was false prophesying. That's what the record shows. That's what they themselves said. <clears throat> Awake, October 8th, 1968. They were guilty of false prophesying. What does it show? How is it easy to say that this group acts as a prophet of God? What does it show? They were guilty of false prophesying right out of their own mouths. 1974. I'm just going to begin here. As early as 1876, they were publishing that the Gentile times of 2,520 years would terminate in the year 1914. Events that have taken place from that year onward prove they were not wrong. God's eternal purpose now triumphing for man's good. 1974, page 178 and 179. Okay, so here they are backtracking again. 1975. The year 1925 came and went. Jesus' anointed followers were still on earth as a class. The faithful men of old time, Abraham, David, and others, had not been resurrected to become princes in the earth. So as Anna MacDonald recalls, I don't know who Anna MacDonald was. I'm assuming she's a, f a Jehovah's Witness. 1925 was a sad year for many brothers. Some of them were stumbled, their hopes were dashed. Instead of its being considered a probability, they read into it that it was a certainty, and some prepared for their loved ones with expectations of the resurrection. Yearbook 1975, page 146. They read into it that it was a certainty because that's what the leadership, the faithful of the watchtower, the faithful and discreet slave leadership was telling them. 1976. It may be that some who have been serving God have planned their lives according to a mistaken view of just what was to happen on a certain date or in a certain year. They may have, for this reason, put off or neglected things that they otherwise would have cared for. What, you mean like starting a family and having children? But they have missed the point of the Bible's warnings concerning the end of the system of things, thinking that Bible chronology reveals the specific date. Watchtower, July 15th, 1976, page 440. 
their own words destroy themselves, their own false prophecies, false dates, false teachings. 1979, because of this hope, the faithful and discreet slave has alerted all of God's people to the sign of the times, indicating the nearness of God's kingdom rule. In this regard, however, it must be observed that this faithful and discreet slave was never inspired, never perfect. Those writings by certain members of the slave class that came to form the Christian part of God's word were inspired and infallible. But that is not true of other writings since. Things published were not perfect in the days of Charles Taze Russell, the first president of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, nor were they perfect in the days of J.F. Rutherford, <coughs> the succeeding president. The increasing, increasing light on God's word, as well as the facts of history, have repeatedly required that adjustments of one kind or another be made down to the very present time. But let us never forget that the motives of this slave were always pure, unselfish. At all times, it has been well-meaning. The Watchtower, March 1st, 1979. It doesn't matter, okay, what their motives are, okay? Even though I disagree, I think that these people, the leadership of the Watchtower, has always been on the other side, okay? Charles Taze Russell was a high-level Freemason. He even has a huge pyramid by his gravesite, okay? The same kind of pyramid that is on the back of the dollar bill. And I connect all of that stuff in my series called Satan's Visible Kingdom. I recommend watching that, part one, two, and three. There's three parts. Okay, we're going to move on now. 1982, the Bible not only foretold these things, but indicated that they would occur on a worldwide scale. Also, the Bible said that all these things would happen upon the generation that was alive in 1914. Yet what were prominent world leaders foretelling just before 1914? They were saying that conditions promising world peace would never be more favorable, yet in terrible troubles, the Bible foretold began right on time in 1914. See, so now here they are going saying, oh, it is a good date. In fact, world leaders now say that 1914 was a turning point in history. After drawing attention to the many things that have marked the period from 1914 onward, Jesus said that this generation will no means pass away until all these things, including the end of this system, occur. Which generation did Jesus mean? He meant the generation of people who were living in 1914. Those persons yet remaining of that generation are now very old. However, some of them will still be alive to see the end of this wicked system. So of this we can be certain. Shortly now, there will be a sudden end to all wickedness and wicked people at Armageddon. You can live forever in paradise on earth. Page 154, 1982. See? Pretty recent, right? Okay. Is there anybody alive still from 1914? No. I guarantee you there's not one Jehovah's Witness who is still alive that was born in 1914. 1984. These definitions embrace both those born around the time of a historic event and all those alive at the time. If Jesus used generation in that sense, and we apply it to 1914, then the babies of that generation are now 70 years old or older, and others alive in 1914 are in their 80s or 90s. A few even having reached 100. There are still many millions of that generation alive. Some of them will by no means pass away until all things occur. Watchtower, Watchtower 19, uh, 15, May 15th, 1984, page 5. Okay? Again, false prophecy. Right there, 1984. 
1989. In the early part of the tw or 20th century, prior to 1919, the Bible students, as Jehovah's Witnesses were then known, had to be released from a form of spiritual captivity to the ideas and practices of false religion. Although having rejected such false teachings as the Trinity and immortal soul, they were still tainted by Babylonish practices. Many had developed a self-righteous attitude and character development. Some were exalting creatures, including in a personality cult that focused on Charles Taze Russell, the first president of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Without any biblical basis, they were observing birthdays and Christmas. The cross was still prominent in their thinking. Some even wore a cross and crown lapel emblem, while others sought the respectability according to Christendom. Okay. I don't agree with these things. At the same time, you know, you got to look at what they're saying here. They, they're changing their teachings. They're giving new light. You know, Christians should, should never celebrate pagan holidays and idolatry and things like that. 1990, adult Christians, too, can be disappointed. And this has, in some cases, led to a spiritual disaster. Some set their hope on a date when they were sure Armageddon would come. When nothing happened on that day, they felt let down. Of course they did. The Watchtower. 415, 1990, page 27, 1992. <clears throat> Today, a small percentage of mankind can still recall the dramatic events of 1914. There was never any dramatic events of 1914. Will that elderly generation pass away before God saves the earth from ruin? Not according to Bible prophecy. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, that had nothing to do with Bible prophecy. That had everything to do with the way they interpreted it, which was wrong. When you see all these things Jesus promised, know that he is near at the doors. Truly I say to you that this generation will by no means pass away until all things occur. Matthew 24, 33 and 34, Watchtower, May 1st, 1992, page 3, the year that shocked the world. 1993. The Society's latest history book, Jehovah's Witness, is Proclaimers of God's Kingdom, 1993. Note, at the end of this book, there is a chronological section called Notable Dates. The predictions for 1925 and 1975 don't even get a mention. Talk about rewriting history to gullible young converts, 1993. Why Awake is published, 1995, before November 8, 1995. Most people, this magazine builds confidence in the Creator's promise of a pace, peaceful and secure new world before the generation that saw the events of 1914 passes away. After November 8, 1995, reference to 1914 generation is deleted. Most important, this magazine builds confidence in the Creator's promise of a peaceful and secure world that is about to replace this, the present wicked, lawless system of things. Okay, so here they are, again, changing things. Okay, moving on here. Here then, since 1914, and particularly since the year 1919, after World War I had ended, we should look for the modern-day counterpart of the prophet Ezekiel, who is Ezekiel's present-day counterpart, whose message and conduct correspond with that of the ancient prophet of Jehovah, of whom today was he a sign or portent, not of some individual man, but of a group of people, being made up of a unified company of persons. The modern Ezekiel is a composite personage made up of many members, just the same as the human body is. So it is with this modern day counterpart of Ezekiel. It is not one person's body, but a composite body made up of many members. All the members were together to do the will of Jehovah, who is the creator of this modern Ezekiel, who then are the group of persons who, toward the beginning of this time of 
the end were commissioned to serve as the mouthpiece and active agent of Jehovah. In order to determine this, check the history of 1919, the first post-war year after the First World War. So here we have the Watchtower claiming that they are the present day counterpart of Ezekiel. So does Jehovah have a prophet to help them, to warn them of dangers and to declare things to come? These questions can be answered in the affirmative. Who is this prophet? This prophet was not one man, but a body of men and women. It was the small group of footstep followers of Jesus Christ known at the time as international Bible students. Today they are known as Jehovah's Christian Witnesses. Of course, it is easy to say that this group acts as a prophet of God. It is another thing to prove it. The only way that this can be done is to review the record. What does it show? Okay, well we've looked at the record and now everybody knows exactly what it shows. Consider too the fact that Jehovah's organization alone in all the earth is directed by God's Holy Spirit or active force. Only this organization functions for Jehovah's purpose and to his praise. To it alone, God's sacred word, the Bible, is not a sealed book. Many persons of the world are very intelligent, capable of understanding complex matters. They can read the Holy Scriptures, but they cannot understand their deep meaning. Yet God's people can comprehend such spiritual things. Why? Not because of special intelligence on their part, but as the Apostle Paul declared, for it is to us that God has revealed them through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches into all things, even the deep things of God. Jesus Christ praised his Heavenly Father for hiding such things from the wise and intellectual ones, but revealing them to babes. How very, how very much true Christians appreciate associating with the only organization on earth that understands the deep things of God. Okay, this is how they boost their organization up by praising themselves. Okay, they are the only ones that they believe have God's deep meanings of his word revealed to them, which couldn't be any further from the truth. Okay, and so again, we're going to read this here. <clears throat> Good news to make you happy, 1976, page 14. It was because they did not write on their own, of their own impulse, but were inspired of God. What is here meant by the word inspired? It means that God, the creator of heaven and earth, moved these men by his spirit or invisible empowering force, putting into their minds what they should write down as his word or message for mankind. It is very obvious that the Watchtower claims to be God's only channel for truth and God's voice here on earth. The Watchtower is a modern day Ezekiel and all those of Christendom will know that there is a prophet of God on earth and that prophet is not one person but many persons which is Jehovah's sorry I lost the end of that quote there. Sorry about that I lost the end of that quote there. I, I don't know what I did with it but uh, I believe it says, uh, but many person, which is the uh, Jehovah's uh, mouthpiece or something to that effect. But anyway, um, as we can see by the record, um, they are false prophets. They are false teachers who continually through history changed what they said in their books when they did re-editions and printed up re-editions. Uh, no different than they do right now with their New World Translation Bible. Uh, they have to keep changing it and adding new additions because people point out stuff and then they have to go in and change it again. So this is what they're about. Okay, and I'm going to end this video with Revelation 18.4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. And that is a message to all the Jehovah's Witnesses who 
have unfortunately been deceived by this organization come out of her okay it's it's a false religious system no different than every other false religious system that our creator and our father in heaven is calling us out of so again i just recommend to the jehovah's witnesses that watch this video please go look at my other video called jesus is jehovah okay it's going to reveal a lot of things to you and for those of you who enjoy talking to the jehovah's witnesses when they come to your door i hope that i have given you uh, within this video enough stuff that you can you know um, bring to the attention of the witnesses that come to your door and again if you uh, haven't watched my video jesus is jehovah please go watch that there's a ton of information in there that you can share with the witnesses that come to your door and it's all scriptures okay thanks a lot for joining me god bless in jesus name